will not only endanger one's life, but it could also endanger someone's life like someone else. Like people, strangers on the street. They show off their skin more and their body posture. They show off their muscles or women would show their cleavage public. And then the flood came and it ruined my shoes. I, you are trying to impersonate evil. I don't agree with this type of celebration because it will actually give glory to what we are trying to compliment. If you wear something bad and I'm sure you support that kind of outfits. And the retail price is around $110,000. One source claims the production cost is around 15% to 20% of the retail price, which is around the re Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn about a luxury. So what are the teachings of the church about luxury? Let's find out. Watch this video till the end. There is no vice in the outward things that man uses, but on the part of man who uses these outward things excessively. This lack of moderation happens in two ways. First, in comparison with the customs and habits of those with whom a person lives, Wherefore, Augustine says, those violations which are against the customs of men and against the general common moral norms should be avoided, so that when the law of any city or any country agrees on one rule, this should be obeyed by a foreigner or a citizen. Secondly, the lack of moderation comes from the inordinate attachment of the user. We often see that a man sometimes takes too much pleasure in using these outward things, either in accordance with the general common moral norms or against the customs of public norms. St. Augustine continues to say that we must avoid excessive pleasure in the use of things, for it leads not only wickedly to abuse the habits of those among whom we dwell, but oftentimes to exceed their bounds. Alright, I'd like to give my own personal example from what I've seen publicly here in my country. Back in my hometown, there is no Catholic who would go to church with short pants, nada. You will never find anyone being disrespectful when they go to church. But when I go to Jakarta Cathedral, it seems like it's okay for individuals to attend the Mass with a t-shirt and short pants. What I want to add here is that those individuals who choose to go to church with shirt and short pants are those who choose pleasures and comfort over discomfort from formal heavy clothing. Hi everyone, please become a member for this channel. If you want to help the distribution of these moral teachings around the world, then you must help speedily. Let us help others not to be deceived by the world. There is a difference between a high quality product and overpriced product. Come on, join now, be a member for this channel and let us help society to be clever and smart and intelligent. Let's help this channel to be advertised, subscribe, like this video and be a member. What I want to elaborate is this. If you have enough money to buy a suit and trousers for men, then why would you want to dress carelessly when you are about to meet God at church? Let's say this man is paid well in his job and he has enough mental gifts to understand that it is more respectful to attend mass with proper attire. Or at least the parent of a young teenager has this privilege of mental gifts and a well-paid job. Why would you let your child dress like so? Do you care or no? What I want to say is that, yes, it takes time to prepare proper outfits for church and it takes a preparation from the night before so that one will not be late in the morning of Sunday Mass. When we make some efforts to get ready for an event or important occasion, then it will take away our pleasures. It will not be comfortable. We must iron our clothes and we must be tidy, right? Let us try our best to not wearing our pleasures when we attend an important occasion, when we go to church. Another example would be these loud vehicles on the road. Have you ever feel annoyed by the noise of those vehicles on the road? 
they want to be seen and they want attention. It could be a hobby for some people, but if it is against public safety, then it will not only endanger one's life, but it could also endanger someone's life like someone else, like people, strangers on the street. And the other obvious common habit from this modern world is that men and women no longer wear modesty. They show off their skin more and their body posture. They show off their muscles or women would show their cleavage publicly. This is not only sinful but it could cause a problem for those who see it. A man could not be so strong when he sees a woman dressed like so. The other reason that men and women dress excessively is that they want to be praised and noticed and they want attention or they want to be prioritized on many levels. For example, if you wear expensive jewelry, then perhaps when you go to a famous restaurant, you don't have to wait to eat there like everybody else. You could probably just show yourself and they could immediately serve you. Or if you drive a Ferrari, then you will probably have this VIP parking spot. The other lesson that I learned is that if you love an item so much or a place so much, you will have to learn to let it go someday because it's not eternal. It's, it's not going to be there forever. For example, I was super glad to have this job as an accountant before and I promised that I would stay there forever, like for a long time. I spent like so much efforts and times to learn the skills and I really... Uh, try my best i tried my best to work hard i probably like it too much and apparently my personal life encountered various problems and i couldn't handle both problems from office and from my own personal life i was not that strong at the time that's why i had to finally let go of my job it's the same thing when i brag about all the electronic devices that i have or the shoes that i bought i bought them all with my own money from my own perspiration from working hard a lot what happened was I used the shoes that I like wherever I go and then the flood came and it ruined my shoes. I went to a store to fix the outside of the shoes, the outsole of the shoes and sadly I chose the wrong shop and they changed the outsole of the shoes and now I cannot use those shoes to exercise anymore because it's super slippery and I could fall if I use it and yes they stole the outsole of the shoes they changed it to a uh, lower quality outsole and i remember exactly how proud i was because i could buy the shoes with my own salary i did not realize that i actually put more love into what i praise maybe and this is a silent pride but i think god taught me to let go of something so that i'll be purified and my heart will be free from from unnecessary attachment another thing I would like to give a comment on is when you go to an event and you wear this bizarre costume which is not you at all and you are trying to impersonate evil I don't agree with this type of celebration because it will actually give glory to what we are trying to compliment if you wear something bad and I'm sure you support that kind of outfits or attire right if we try to impersonate the saints and practice their virtues, then it is awesome. It's amazing. I know I'm not perfect either. I don't always prepare myself well every day, but I have this consciousness that it's imperative to present yourself well out there. And it is also important to learn something valuable, something that is going to improve your values and embrace the Christian virtues. We could start from reading good spiritual books, or just scientific books which could give us enough knowledge to be a better person to stay healthy and to, to just to be a good examples for our society I'm not saying that when you fail to accomplish your duty your duty as a Christian then you must give up and just let yourself dwell in your disordered life this is not good at all Dr. Jordan Peterson explain why it is imperative to build your daily routine, why it is imperative to set your daily schedule. 
so that you will know what direction that you're heading. I'm seeing this social world about how dressing up is important and I saw this fashion YouTuber who works with famous and expensive brands. They have this term of street brand and I was like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. I checked the names of all these brands and the price is so affordable and the quality of the dress is also good it's not that bad how could they call it a street brand i was quite shocked they tried to diminish the values of some shops and praise the shops with higher price rate is this a marketing strategy is this how you compete out there out there i have no idea but i was like oh no this is competition of social circle probably who has more money. This is my opinion, my personal opinion. They simply want to show off their capability to earn money. And yes, money becomes their god. For my understanding, we call a food street food because some people sell it on the street and they call these brands as street brands. They are referring the street brands to shops like shops which you can find at the malls shops which are located in the proper stores here and there i'm so confused we don't realize this at all but well we must be clever i'm telling you okay another weird price tag for this famous luxurious brand maybe i shouldn't call the name of the brand or should i I don't know. I did a little bit research about these luxurious handbag brand and I watched some videos about it. What I found is that the production cost of this bag is only $800. And the retail price is around $110,000. One source claims the production cost is around 15% to 20% of the retail price which is around the retail price is around $110,000 if you multiply by uh, 15% uh, it equals $16,500 or if you calculate the 20% from um, $110,000 it becomes twenty two thousand dollars. I look up I look it up I look it up the price of crocodile leather and it costs only one thousand dollars. Some online sources give the price for a first grade for crocodile leather for only seven hundred dollars. The so the quality of this crocodile leather is like you've seen here on my screen so they cut it from the belly part of the crocodile the size is 43 to 46 the thickness is around two ounces i i believe this is it's called two ounces or 0 0.8 millimeters and um the color is ox blood okay the species is crocodilus porosus I'm thinking hard about this. Why would you want to give your money for such a thing? The markup for selling one bag is about 10,900%. Did I calculate this correctly or did I miss something? Let's say they need five people to work on this project, on this one bag. Let's add just 500 dollars per person just to appreciate the craftsmanship for this project and it becomes two thousand five hundred dollars plus one thousand dollars for the crocodile leather let's add another electrical bills or maintenance expense for all the machines three hundred dollars the total production cost would be around two thousand five hundred dollars plus one thousand dollars plus three hundred dollars so it becomes three thousand eight hundred dollars let's check the markup price for this it's gonna be two thousand seven hundred ninety four two thousand seven hundred ninety four ninety four percent markup which is insane still 
in my opinion. 1,000% markup is already definitely dishonest. And should I say it's evil? I mean, in my opinion, it's just not honest at all. Why do we want to be deceived by this falsehood? This is why we need to study well at school so that we will not be fooled. $300 leather bag is already a high quality bag in my opinion. A man bought crocodile leather to create this similar look alike luxurious brand bag for this for his girlfriend and it cost him only $400. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen, why would you want to exhaust your life with this dream or ambition? It's really not good. You must be clever. We must be clever. We are so capable of avoiding excessive expenditure. This is why God gives us such a talent and a brain that we need to use so that we will help one another. We must try our best not to feed our ego. I know it's easy to say this, but I'm trying my best to encourage everyone to practice their faith well. I read some personal development books, and if I'm not mistaken, some of these rich men and women did not spend their money on excessive expenditure, but they spent their money to build a library and a university. Noble families gave away scholarships to the younger generation. They built other useful things like feeding the poor and just did so many charitable events, just like what the saints did. Let us spend our money wisely and let us try our best to live with humility and fulfill our dire needs with prudence. All right, um, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm just uh, giving you the best option, option from like you know from the teachings of the saints uh, so the source of this content today is from saint thomas aquinas summa theologiae i hope i'm i'm pronouncing it i'm pronouncing it right summa theologiae so yes saint thomas aquinas um wrote about uh, excessive expenditure why we should just wear something with humility and why we should not wear uh, excessive pleasures when we choose, when we want to choose to wear something outward. All right. I'm trying to give you like the easiest examples here. I know you, you've got the skills, you work really hard and you want to have this goal in your life. You want to achieve something, but as a Christian's, you, we must know the rules. We should live according to the teachings of the church, right? So never give up. I'm gonna, I think this is gonna be my continuous content. I mean, I, I'm going to like do some research about this maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna try to find another luxurious things and the maybe you can substitute something with it i mean you can still look elegant and look proper and tidy without those um ex excessive like expensive expenditure right well that's it thank you so much for watching this video god bless